Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thought that maybe today you'd like to go and do a little bit of chores with me. And I'm going to stop by the coin shop because I haven't seen Dick and Jerry here in a little bit now. So I figured we'd stop by, have a chat with them, and see if there's anything new going on in the gold and silver world. And ladies and gentlemen, by the way, if you did not see the video of the trip that myself and my family took to Denali, it was pretty awesome. So go check that out. I'll go ahead and leave it on the right hand corner. I think it's right there so you can go check it out. So today we're going to pick up four of these empty cans that I've been rotating. I've got two right there. And we're just going to put them back here. Just four of these guys. And the yellow ones, ladies and gentlemen, I understand that these were like meant for diesel or heating fuel. But they hold gasoline just as well. And I really don't need any for diesel or heating fuel right now. I just need some for gasoline. So we got those four here in the back and then we'll go over to Costco, fill these up and then let's go to the coin shop. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, right now it's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Today is the second day of June and it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I was ranting about this when I was editing a video in the bunker here. I think it was yesterday or the day before it was 36 degrees outside 36 or 37 something like that but it was very cold and it was cold enough in the bunker where i should have turned my heater on but i'm stubborn enough to say nope i will not turn the heater on it was like 50 degrees inside the bunker before we go on ladies and gentlemen i don't remember what video it was in where i was in my truck but somebody spotted this i usually have this right here and uh, it's just so much easier for me to tell you all what this is on a video than trying to type it as a reply or in an email. All this, and actually, one of you all sent me this a while back. But all this is, ladies and gentlemen, I recommend that everyone get this, right? Uh, my my Mass 4 Casualty Pack, or Mac 4 is what it's called. Uh, it's from Refuge Medical, uh, and it's uh, owned by Bear Independent, by Bear over at Bear Independent. And I do believe that this is where this came from, too. I recommend to anyone that if you're going to have anything at all in your vehicle first aid related that it be this and that it be this and make sure that it's a good one this is a cat tourniquet combat action tourniquet this is what i call it is what I, that's what i grew up calling it in the army and uh this is really a good one okay it's a really good one what you want to do is, is you want to make sure that you set it up for yourself first uh, before you put it in here in case you ever need it but it's already set up pretty much for anyone to use and uh i recommend that you have this because if you come across a car accident this can save somebody's life right uh band-aids and uh hand cleaner and stuff like that or all of these other things that are in a basic first aid kit you know a little gauze yes it's great to have all of those things but if you come across a really bad accident where somebody's bleeding out this can save somebody's life right here these two simple items okay so that's what it is and uh, what i do is, is i use these right here to hook them up to that handle right there and it's very easily accessible thank goodness i've never needed to use it but that's what it is so i went ahead and exited off of a road from the highway to take the back roads so that you can see the greenery from here instead of seeing you know so many cars pass by on the highway and as you can see everything here is nice and green the mountains are flush green and it's just a beautiful part of the year when it's not raining this much <laughs> at least you know, uh, all of this rain here that we're having, plus the cold weather conditions, it makes me think that summer's already over and we're already headed into fall. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it reminded me too, uh, seeing all this greenery of the trip that uh, we took to the Nali. There's a part on that video where I highly recommend that people don't do this. There was this really good looking bull moose by the side of the road and he was nibbling on the grass or something green there on the side of on the side of the road and there was a walking path behind him and about i would say about 20 or 30 feet uh, away from that moose and the moose was just minding his own business he was being a moose he was eating right that's what they do they eat <laughs> there was this guy like looking like can i cross this path he was like saying to himself should I cross this path? And we were all thinking like, and there was some ladies next to us in our next to our vehicle outside. They're like, do not keep walking. <laughs> and he kept walking and just looking at the moose. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, 
if that moose turns around and gets startled by this guy, he better be a an athlete, all right? He better be a collegiate runner or something like that to be able to get away from that guy. But it all turned out well. The guy snuck on by and the moose just kept eating his little snack that he was having. All right, let's head on over to Costco and let's fill these four gas cans up and then let's take it on over to the coin shop. Alright, and we are off. That, ladies and gentlemen, was an easy hundred and ten plus dollars <laughs> to fill up 20 gallons, well, less than 20 gallons, because I only put about four and a half gallons of gasoline in each uh, container. And then I think my truck took like just shy of 10 gallons. So, yeah, it's very easy nowadays to drop a hundred plus bucks pretty much on anything that you do. I mean, go get an oil change. Right here, Jiffy Lubes. I just passed Jiffy Lubes. That's where I get my oil change. If you go in there and get a full synthetic oil change, which is what I normally get for my vehicles. Well, not normally, always. It's $109, I think. And uh, <laughs> unless you do it yourself, and even if you do it yourself, the oil alone for like full synthetic, uh, let's say Mobile One, you're looking at, what, just shy of $50 for six quarts? And my vehicles, I believe, take seven quarts. So you're looking at like $60 for, for the oil and then another $10 or so for the oil filter, 70 bucks. So the way I figure is, well, I'm paying about an additional 30 bucks so that they can do it and I don't have to bother with getting rid of the oil or none of that stuff. So I might as well just pay for it to get done. I remember saying this on so many different videos that I've talked about this in the past. And it's that our standard of living will never go back to the way it was, especially for us half centurions, right? Us that are like 50 or older and we remember back to the 80s, uh, maybe early 80s, late 80s, where I remember when I used to get an allowance from my dad, whenever he was able to afford to give me an allowance, it was like a dollar a week. And that dollar actually stretched by because why there was penny candies in those days. In those days, you can buy penny candies. If if you wanted to splurge, you get the nickel candies. You know, they can get individually. Uh, a bag of potato chips was like, I don't know, 25 cents or something like that. So it will last. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not going back to the way that it was. It's not going back. I believe that right now we are experiencing what is a floor. Like a floor to the cost of living. Meaning that two years ago or three years ago, the cost of living was a lot less than what it is now, right? And then it shot way up and then now it's leveling off. It's leveling off now where I don't believe that we will see, at least here in Alaska, about gasoline. I don't believe that we will see gasoline like less than $3 a gallon. Unless it's on sale for some reason, for some kind of a promotion from a, from a gas station, right? I don't think we'll see less than $3 a gallon gasoline prices ever again, at least here in Alaska. Because I know it's a little less in the lower 48. And especially if we keep people in government that are there now, if we keep those ideological people in government as they are there now, we'll never ever see gas at three dollars or less i believe that 100 percent. same thing with everything else take a look and see how much your grocery bill has gone up so how much did you spend monthly on your grocery bill three years ago and how much do you spend today for the exact same thing that you bought three years ago i'm sure it's a lot higher but it's probably come down just a little bit right and it's found the floor, meaning that you're never gonna get see anything lower than that, unless there's a special promotion or something. Because there always is. Sometimes store put things on sale where they lose money on purpose just to bring people in. All right, enough yapping, ladies and gentlemen. You see what happens? I get to talking to you all, and I start yapping, and I forget what time it is. And look at that, I almost went past this red light. So yeah, I have to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. I almost went past this red light, but I caught it just in time. I know I'm gonna get a lot of slack from you all down in the comments about that red light. Now I am hoping that we can find some parking because 
it's only nine o'clock in the morning but for some reason this road here always fills up and for those of you that want to come to the coin shop it's on cushman you see that it's on cushman street but this here where we're on we're on second avenue and thank you very much lord you must have heard me because there's parking all over this place <laughs> Usually there's not that much parking, no matter what time of the day it is in the morning here, because of tourist season. This is tourist season right now. But plenty of parking. Let's go on in there and see what's going on. I kind of miss the guys. Jerry, guess what? I was just telling our peoples that I had to come over I don't really have anything to buy, but I missed you guys. I haven't seen you in a while. And I and I wanted to come over and bitch about how it's the second day of June and it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside. What is up with that? You have to interview a higher power than me. <laughs> yep, I guess so. But uh, today, Jerry, I want to talk about what you think is going to happen in the market with this debt ceiling going up. I mean, with the debt ceiling being passed, right? Did you hear about that, that the president's supposed to be signing it into law? Today, I think it is. He's supposed to be signing it into law? I believe that's correct. Uh -huh. So check this out, Jerry. I, and I didn't come up with this by myself uh, because I've been listening to it from some financial shows, but I want to pass this through you. So you know how the banks are having problem with liquidity? Right. And uh, now the... Federal government is allowed to spend again and borrow, right, and borrow. So they're going to go out there and borrow about a trillion dollars, of which the trillion dollars that they're going to borrow, about $500 billion of that is going to pay interest on the loan, okay? So if the banks are having problems with liquidity, where are they going to get that money from? Where is it going to come from? Because if banks are having problems with liquidity and the government has to sell bonds, in order to borrow money and people in other countries are not buying these bonds and therefore by default usually like it works the banks will buy the bonds and then the federal reserve usually buys the bonds from the banks well what do you think that's going to do to the to the banking industry well banks that have a short-term liquidity problem and, and that was mainly caused by people taking money out of banks putting it in better investments such yep. as money markets where they were earning, you know, at that time, four and three quarters percent or five percent interest. Uh, a lot of those banks are catching up now, though, and offering TDs um, that are equivalent to that to try and stop that that drain from the banks. Um, I think they resisted it at first, hoping that maybe the Fed might lower the rates. I'm not. I'm not sure the motivation, but. Um, they're, they're catching up now because it's cheaper for them to pay the customer that interest rate than it is to borrow money short term from the Fed. Now, what do you think will happen? And do you think this will happen if the Fed reverses course and starts cutting interest rate late this year? You see, this is something that I was talking about last year that I think that late this year after the Federal Reserve has put as much pain onto the markets, the banks, the American people as possible, that they were going to do a 180 and not only stop increasing interest rates, but dropping them and also doing quantitative easing. What do you think is going to happen to, let's say, I know you're not a markets guru, but you are a silver and gold guru, but what do you think will happen to the markets if the Fed does a 180 and starts doing QE and dropping interest rates? And what do you think will happen to the price, nominal price of gold and silver? The Fed, I do not believe, will be lowering it. They may not raise it as much as if they were planning on doing. They only have one tool to help in times of recession, or worse, a depression, and that is to lower interest rates. And as we talked about before, I mean, they did that years ago to the point where they couldn't go any lower. And for a decade, more than a decade, we saw ridiculously low interest rates. Traditionally, the Fed was around, you know, four or five percent in that area. Uh, we're back there now. I, I don't understand really why the Fed thinks that they might need to raise us some more. And that's the talk on the street, I hear. Um, because they're afraid that the inflation rate is, is not coming down fast enough. 
I think that that will probably take care of itself as the effects of COVID kind of wear away and we, we get back to a normalcy. The price of oil is the key to a lot of it and it's below 70 bucks a barrel right now. Um, so I, I see that the inflation rate is going to taper off. I do not see that the Fed would lower the interest rates, but let's say they do. Let's say your hypothesis is true. Uh, that would have probably a positive effect on the metals. When the Fed was constantly lowering them, um, I noticed the next day after the uh, FOMC met that the price of gold and silver would jump if they, if they uh, did not raise them or lower them to a point. But when they raise it, that makes people think, well, they're, now they're being responsible and so our money is going to be stronger and I don't need to buy those metals. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. It's a ridiculous overreaction <laughs> to a one day event. But, you know, in, in the markets that we play here, we watch that. Uh, and, and the news of today can really drive the markets for a 24 hour period. Mm -hmm. And then that effect wears off and you get back to where you were before the whole thing started. So we, we kind of ignore the, the really large gyrations we see during the day, either up or down. It usually happens around noon uh, Alaska time when New York comes on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting how, how people just want to, to grasp the shortest term thing and make a decision. You should not do that. Always look at the long term uh, picture for the metals and what you think they're going to do five, ten years down the road, not for what it's going to do tomorrow. So you remember the last time that silver was like at an all-time high, which was 2011, I believe it was? Right around there, yeah. It was like 40, let's say 50 bucks. It was like 48. 49. 49 bucks, right? But let's say 50 bucks just to make it easy. So let me ask you a question. Right now, silver is trading at what, 24, 25? Right around 24, a little less than 24. Okay, so let's say it's trading at 25, half of what it was back in 2011. Right. Do you think that the value of the dollars that it took to buy silver back in 2011 have lost value between 2011 and today or have gained value? The dollar has lost value. Right. Okay. So this is where I'm getting at. I think you already know. So in 2011 dollars, $25 today is not $25. That's correct. So what I'm thinking is, is that today, right now, Silver is the cheapest nominally valued that it's ever been in the history of mankind. When you take into consideration the devaluation of the dollars from 2011, which is where silver hit a high, to what they're valued, the dollars are valued today, 2023, where silver is at less than half of what it was back in 2011. So would you think that would, this would make a great thumbnail, wouldn't it? Uh, silver is the cheapest that it's ever been in the history of mankind. Do you think that's a pretty accurate statement? I would have to look <laughs> at charts with the inflation rate pumped in. Uh, some years ago, The Economist magazine, I think, ran some charts looking at gold prices, not, not silver, but gold, and went back to, uh, I think, a base year of about 1980 or whatever. From 1980 to really 2002, gold didn't do anything. In fact, during the 90s, it was... At, record lows of 260 270 um, wow. but it made up for lost time rapidly and it it went back up to where it had been four or five hundred dollars and it just kept going and we established a new base around eight nine hundred dollars for, mm. for a while and what the economists had done is just taken a chart and pumped in cpi back to that base here and it almost mirrored it exactly it was pretty incredible yeah. to see uh, so yeah, I, I agree with you that when you look at it from that perspective, silver is a good buy. The day of reckoning is coming and you're going to see it jump again, but whether yeah. it's tomorrow or, or five years from now, we don't know. So ladies and gentlemen, what Jerry is trying to say is buy silver now. I'm not a financial advisor and neither is Jerry. I have to say that because we're on the internet. <laughs> but what he's saying is that if you remember the jump that gold and silver, or especially gold did back in the 80s, it made a huge jump and it established a floor, just like we were talking on our way here, right? That the standard of living now or the cost of living has kind of like established the floor. It's kind of like settled a little bit, but wait for the next jump. Same thing with gold and silver. It's established a floor. 
Wait for the next jump because it's going to be up epic. And you know what, Jerry? I didn't come in here to buy any gold or silver, but you convinced me. I'm going to get me a little bit of silver now that I'm here, all right? It's at high pressure. Let's go see what you got. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Jerry did it again. He talked me into buying this little, it looks like a little commemorative coin. But this is actually sterling silver. Leave in the comments what percentage is sterling silver, if you know. That way people that don't know can figure it out. It's pretty cool. Look at that. You can actually pause the video right now and see what it is. And not only am I buying that one, but check these guys out. This is... I call these Aussies. These are from Australia. Yeah, Auss I call them Aussies, <laughs> but uh, this is a crocodile. Oh, let's see. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that pretty? And Jerry said that he was going to give them to me at a deal at only like 50 cents over spot. What, <laughs> isn't that what you said, Jerry? Uh, he misunderstood. Uh, oh, I misunderstood again. <laughs> I guess I did it again, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, have a great day. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Let me go ahead and pull some cash out so that Jerry can take it and uh, release those coins to me. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.